In this video, we're going to discuss the Clausius Clapeyron equation. Now, in a previous video, we looked at the general Clapeyron equation, which gave us a general expression for the slope of a phase diagram. So a phase diagram looks at varying pressure with respect to temperature, and that slope in that case would be dp over dt. So uh, this gives us a way to relate the slope of a phase diagram to intrinsic properties of a phase transition. Uh, i.e. its slope, I mean, it's, um, its entropy of the transition and the molar, the change in molar volume for the transition. Now, before we get into the clausius clapeyron equation in any detail, I want to show that this equation can be re-expressed to involve the enthalpy of the transition by exploiting what we know about the Gibbs free energy at equilibrium. So at equilibrium, we know that the delta G is going to be equal to zero, right? So if we take any general transition, we know that delta G for that transition is going to be equal to delta H for that transition minus T delta S for that transition. And since we're at equilibrium, we know that this whole thing is gonna be equal to zero, right? Since it's equal to zero, we can uh, rearrange this guy so we can express uh, the entropy in terms of enthalpy, right? So we end up with the following. So we have delta S for the transition is going to be equal to delta H for the transition over T, right? So you bring that guy over as negative, those negatives cancel out and you just divide by the temperature. So what we can do here is use this in order to re-express the uh, Clapeyron equation in terms of enthalpy, right? So if we make that substitution, then that means we can also express the Clapeyron equation as delta H of the transition over T delta V of the transition, right? So this basically re-expresses the Clapeyron equation in terms of the enthalpy of whatever transition you're interested in, right? So we know we can make this re-expression of the Clapeyron equation. Now the Clausius Clapeyron equation is looking at a very specific transition. So the, the Clapeyron equation is general. You can use it and apply it to any point along the phase diagram. The Clausius Clapeyron equation is specifically looking at uh, liquid to vapor transitions, right? So with the Clausius Clapeyron equation, we're looking at the liquid vapor boundary. Right, so your vaporization or condensation types of processes, right? So we're looking specifically at the liquid vapor boundary. And it, uh, it applies a, a very astute approximation here um, in order to get a general expression for the Clapeyron equation at the liquid vapor boundary. The approximation that we use, right, we can make the approximation that the molar volume of the gas is so much larger than the molar volume of the liquid, right? Now think about this approximation for a second and, and try to rationalize to yourself that it makes sense, right? We know that gas particles are so much more spread out. Gas particles are gonna take up much more volume, much greater volume in a container, right? Um, so it makes sense to approximate that the molar volume of the gas is gonna be much, much greater than the molar volume of the liquid. Right now, how does this help us? Well, we know that the Clapeyron equation depends on the change in molar volume for the transition, right? So we have to calculate in this case, the difference between the volume, the molar volume of the gas and the molar volume of the liquid, right? But if we're making this approximation, then basically we can say that this difference between the molar volume of the gas and the liquid is going to be approximately equal to, so let me use the wavy equal sign for an approximation that we're making. So basically this difference is just going to be equal to the molar volume of the gas, right? If you have a really, really large number and you subtract a really small number from it, you can just approximate it as a large number. So as long as we have a good physical basis for doing this, which we do, then this is a pretty reasonable approximation. But what does that open up for us? Well, that means that we can take any of our gas state equations and be able to model the gas in that using that state function. So in this case, I'm going to use the ideal gas law. So basically, we start with our Clapeyron equation, right? 
we got dp dt is equal to delta h of the transition over t, right? And since we're making this approximation, we can just say, all right, this is just going to be the molar volume of the gas. From there, I can just plug in my ideal gas law, right? So we'll have delta h of the transition, t, and then on the bottom here, we'll just have rt over p, right? Just plugging in our ideal gas law for the molar volume. So now that we have that, we can flip this guy. So we got P delta H of the transition over RT squared, right? That's DP DT. Okay, so now that I have this expression, right? So now if you just uh, look up online for the clausius clapeyron equation, you might see it written in a couple of different forms. This is one of them where it's just this general uh, differential form. Right. But there's also the integral form. Right. You notice that we have these two differentials, dp and dt, and we have functions, pieces of this function that depend on pressure and temperature. Right. So we can so integrate on both sides and solve for this. So let's move pressure over to this side. So we'll have one over p. Dp. And then if we move dt uh, over to this side. Right. So then we'll have uh, we'll have delta h. TRS over RT squared DT, right? Just moving everything to both sides. So, um, so now at this point, we can solve the integral on both sides. So on the left, we can integrate from some initial pressure P1 to a final pressure P2 of one over P DP. And then on the right-hand side, we can move Delta H and R out of the integral. So that we're integrating from some initial temperature T1 to some final temperature T2 of 1 over T squared dt, right? So once you do the integral, like so the, the uh, left side, the integral on the left-hand side would just be the natural log of P2 over P1, right? And that's going to be equal to, on the right-hand side, we'll just have delta H for the transition over R, and when you solve this integral, you'll just get one over T2 minus one over T1, right? So this form is the integral form of the clausius clapeyron equation, right? So I'm gonna call this guy the clausius clapeyron equation. And like I said, this is a very specific application that's making a very specific approximation, right? So you can only use the clausius clapeyron equation if you're um, investigating something at the liquid vapor boundary, right? So if you're looking at a process that's vaporization, um, something like that, that's going to be applicable. The clausius clapeyron equation is going to be applicable to that scenario. But if you're looking at, you know, for example, melting or something like from, you know, solid to liquid, this is no longer a valid approximation because you're making approximations based on the uh, relationship between the gas and the liquid specifically.